Thanks, Mark. This could be the night. Seven years, and White Sox fans been waiting for a division title. And tonight, maybe one year earlier than Jerry Reinsdorf and Jerry Manuel expected, that the White Sox can clinch the division tonight from Comiskey. Rookie John Garland is on the mound against the Red Sox. Pedro Martinez. And of course, if the White Sox win, it doesn't matter what Cleveland does tonight. The Sox are on their way to the playoffs and maybe the World Series. Live from Comiskey, I'm Steve McEwen for ABC7 News. A well-deserved break coming up for both the Sox and the Cubs. They finish up their three-game series just the opposite from the first time they met the season. It's the Cubs taking two out of three. Pretty popular ticket this weekend, no matter what the standings are, no matter how old you are. On the north side of the friendly confines, it was hot, and Frank Thomas was smoking with his bat to the top of the fourth, all the way out into Kenmore Avenue. Sox still trail by one, but then up next, Magli Ordonez to the right field bleachers. His 21st dinger of the year ties the game at three. Seesaw battle, the bottom of the fifth. Oh, Henry sends it all the way to the right field, and the Cubs take a five to four lead. But then we go to the top of the sixth. Carlos Lee one more time. His second home run of the game, a two-run shot. And the White Sox tie the game at six. That's where Sammy Sosa picks it up with a little skip in his step. That two-run homer gives the Cubs an eight to six lead. They went on to win the game nine to six and take two out of three or suggestions about putting bars right outside the ballpark, you know, drinking establishments. And then Brooks came on the radio and said, you know what, though? We only play 81 home games. What happens to those bars the other three, uh, 275 days of the year? See, I think that's exactly what the, <clears throat> the White Sox need to do long term. I mean, if you look at Bridgeport right now, and I know a little bit about real estate on the side, so Bridgeport is really developing. It really is. Between single-family homes, they've got some uh, lofts that they've been building in Bridgeport. I think that's what the White Sox can count on is a little help from the city, a little help from real estate developers. If they turn that neighborhood, not into Wrigleyville, keep it a south side feel. It doesn't have to be Yuppieville, but if they take some south side bar owners to make some investments into the area, maybe take some restaurant people from Taylor Street, put a Leona's there, and now it's Italian beef. Where, where would bit. you, I mean, I'm, because I'm... they got parking lots around the park. Yeah, They've exactly. Got parking lots, where are you I mean, going to put those But you could put them, in, if, you, if you think about it, a little bit west of the ballpark, and you put it around the parking lots, you know, it doesn't have to be just Jimbo's being the only place that people can congregate to after a game. You know, there's a lot of other places that they can start developing around there, and I think long term, that'll save the White Sox from ever leaving the South Side. Or do you get rid of some of those parking lots because that's all you see around the ballpark? Do you take an area and maybe but make a little what? food that's, fest? But, but, but that's income to the, to the team. I mean, they're not going to give up guaranteed income, $10 a car. Not the parking lots aren't full. Yeah, but the parking lots are full around the ballpark most of the time. If they've got 15, 20,000 fans, those parking lots that are closest Why to the ballpark build garages, Lou? have... Where are you going to build a garage you now? Can, now you're talking just... about an expense. This team is in no position to be spending money on more expenses. They couldn't even refurbish, redo the ballpark without getting money from uh, U.S. Cellular. I'm just saying if you get private enterprise to invest in it, you build a parking garage, and then you take one of those lots, and all of a sudden you turn it into kind of like a neighborhood feel, not too far. Maybe where the old Comiskey used to But like Brooks said, what do you do then the rest of the month, the other four months? Who's going to invest in a bar that's going to have people in it for six months out of the, six months out of the year or 81 games? 81 days, and then... A lot of people used to say that about Wrigleyville, though. Think about it 20 years ago. Wrigleyville was not a hip and happy place to be. It only started in the 80s, and when they started overdeveloping you know, that area, you've got bar next to bar, next to restaurant, next to sushi place, next to pizza joint. They can kind of do the same thing with the South Side and revive it and kind of give Brid Bridgeport you know, its uh, resurrection. All right, guys, good conversation. Up next, we're going to uh, take a break. When we come back, we're going to switch our focus to the Bears. They complete another mini camp today, and... Although they say everything is fine with their quarterback situation, is it? Do the Bears need a veteran on the depth chart? We'll talk about it when we return. Lou Canella is a smart guy. You would never build a bar there, right? I wouldn't build a bar there right now, but with all the money you're making in real estate, I think you should buy <laughs> about yeah, the plan. We'll, we'll go in together. Okay.